Hi, I'm Mark from Valor Excel. Thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to show you how you can use the AI image generator in Canva. Now Canva is full of thousands of amazing stock images. You can really do a lot with their graphic design elements, but realistically, you'll be using things that millions of other people have used. And although your project may not look exactly like somebody else's, there could be similarity. And that may be a big deal if you're doing something in marketing or advertising. If you want something that's really unique and hasn't been duplicated by somebody else, and that's where the AI image generator comes in handy. Now, today we will be using the Canva Pro version. You can generate AI images in Canva free, so I will leave a link in the description below this video for the Canva website. You can check out the different options and decide what's best for you. But right now, I'd like to go ahead and log into Canva Pro. Now, there are a few different options for accessing the AI image generator. You can click on Magic Studio, and it will take you directly to where you can start building something by one of these Try Now options. But another thing that you can do from the home page is to simply go ahead and select whatever it is that you'd like to use as your finished project. Now, one of the great things about using the AI image generator is that it not only gives you something that's unique, but it enables you to come up with images that you probably won't ever find elsewhere in Canva. If you want something that's extremely specific, it probably won't appear anywhere in the stock photos or in the graphics, but by using the AI image generator, you can come up with exactly what you want and you can tweak it. So to demonstrate this, I think what I'd like to do is let's pretend that we want to create a book cover. So what we'll do here is actually start with just a blank book cover. And now at this point, what I can do to access the AI image generator is come up here and click on elements. You'll notice down here, there is an AI image generator section and it gives you an option to generate your own. So I'll click on that. And now it's asking us to describe what we would like to create. Now you can do videos with this as well, but in this tutorial, I'm sticking just with images. So it's asking for five plus words to describe what we want. Now, again, I want to do something that is really going to require AI to bring to life. So I want to pretend that we wrote a book about muskrat pirates. I know that's kind of random, but I wanted something really fantastical. So let's go ahead and put that in. Now I added in a wetlands because I also want to describe what the background should look like. Now you'll notice here underneath the description, there's a styles section and it's defaulted to none. I'm going to keep it there because what we're looking at here are all the different options. Maybe you want something specifically to be anime or you want it to look photorealistic. It's really up to you. I find if you keep it at none, it just gives you more to choose from. So we'll keep it that way. The aspect ratio defaulted to square and that's fine. Now again, as I mentioned, each time you generate an image, you will be using a credit. And with the Canva Pro plan, you get 500 per month. So I'll go ahead now and click on Generate Image. Now it will always generate four images for you. And I did want to mention about AI. It's kind of a work in progress because you always need to really pay close attention to what is in the final image because sometimes you can wind up with some strange looking things and you'll notice it particularly with hands or fingers. And that can apply whether you're doing an animal character or a human. So basically you could select whichever one of these that you like and it would just be a simple matter of dragging it and dropping it over here. Now you also can click on the ellipsis beside one of these and select generate more like this. So it may be kind of what you're looking for but you want more to pick from and that'll give you the opportunity to then come and generate again and have more in that same style. So let me zoom in a little bit so we can see this guy. And there, that looks pretty interesting. That's not too bad. I kind of like that. Now, what we'll do here is 
I want to show you a really nice tool. Let's just go ahead. I'll center this in the middle. Now, one of the things that we can do here is I can click on Edit Photo. And now, in Magic Studio, there are a lot of different things that we can do with this. And I'll demonstrate each one of these. So, first of all, I'd like a little bit more of a background here because, again, I'm kind of picturing this being a book cover. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And let me just center that here again. And now what I'd like to do is click on Magic Expand. And I'm going to select Whole Page. So it will take the background that we have here and it will actually increase it in size so that it fills this entire space. So I'll click on Magic Expand. And now let me zoom in a little bit. That doesn't look too bad. We have kind of a strange thing down here that almost looks like a bird of some kind, but I like what it did in the background. And I'm not too crazy about that. Now, just as with the generated image itself, we can swap this out. So let's try this one instead. And that. But I think I actually do like this first one. And again, I'm not too jazzed about this. So we'll do something with that in just a second. But the first thing I think I'd like to do here is... I'd like to take him and make him a little bit larger in the overall image. So what I can do is click on Done. And now let's go back to Edit Photo. And I'd like to do Magic Grab. And so now what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and what I want to be able to do is remove him from the background. So it's already kind of recognized that. And now I can click and drag him around. And what's nice is I have the ability to resize him, which is really good. So there I can make him whatever size we'd like. Now something else that's really helpful here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, is let's say that we liked what was done here, but Let's say that I really wasn't too happy about the fact that he had kind of these dark blue trousers with the red, and I would have rather had these be green. So what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and come up here and let's click on Magic Edit. And now let me zoom in a little bit, and this gives you a brush that you can use. And I'm going to go with a small brush size here. And so what I want to do is I want to start brushing with this. And this won't be perfect, of course, but I'm just going to go around here and let me just kind of draw over top of these trousers. I want to indicate that this is the area that we're looking at. Now, I could have done a slightly larger brush size, but I didn't want to go over any of these lines. And again, this won't be perfect, but it'll at least give us a good example. And now what I can come up here and do is click on Describe Your Edit. So I'm going to say that I want to change the color to green. And now if I click on Generate, It's done a pretty good job here of changing them to green. That doesn't look bad. And again, this will give me a couple of different options that I can pick from. Let's see what that one looks like. Yeah, I like that. They look like they're pretty similar, but let's just go ahead and go with that one. So I'll click on Done. So now we've been able to detach the figure from the background and change the color of the trousers and resize him and reposition him. So I think the next thing I'd like to do here is let's bring in a pirate flag. So I'm going to go to Photos and let's search for a pirate flag. 
and I like this one. Now, I'd like to put this in the picture, but the problem is this is a picture. So what I can do here again is click on Edit Photo, and this time we're going to use the background remover, and now we basically have almost like a transparency, and I'm just going to come in a little bit there and resize that. And now let's put that up here in the corner. And let me just move him a little bit. And now I think I'd like to really do something with this down here because I just don't like that. So let's go back to photos and let me look for a parrot. And I want to find something that looks like it might fit. That actually doesn't look too bad. I like that. Let me resize this. Now one of the things that we could do here is go to Edit Photo and if we wanted to we could just blur this slightly. I'll just do Whole Image and just want to blur it a little bit And if we want, we can even go in and use a filter and try to get something that matches the backdrop a little bit more. So there, that's a little bit more muted. I kind of like that. It doesn't stand out so much from the background. And let me go ahead and add some text here. And let's put it in a different font. And I'll come up here on effects and let's do a lift just to make it stand out a little bit more from the background. Let me move this up a little bit. And there you go. So we started off with the basic image. We expanded it to fill everything that was here. We incorporated some other elements. We changed the color. And what's nice is you can also make adjustments to the brightness, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows. And that would have been something else we could have done here with the parrot. So it's just a very unique way to come up with an image that's distinctly your own. And I really encourage you play around with the image generator. The more specific you are, the better the results will be. You can really wind up with situations where you get amazing detail, but you do have to always look very carefully. If you're generating human figures, again, sometimes strange things happen with hands or arms. And even with faces, sometimes you really need to look at each of the eyes and make sure that they match. And speaking of eyes, just for the fun of it, Let's go ahead and just to close things out here, I'd like to select the draw option. And let's enlarge this a little bit. I think I'd like to give our pirate friend an eye patch. And I'll just change the weight of the line a little bit. All right. And there you have it. So I really encourage you experiment with it. It's not only fun, but you really can come up with some amazing results and they'll be very unique to your own needs, whether you're doing a book cover or social media or a YouTube thumbnail. And this technology continues to get better and better. So I think over time, we'll see even more refined results than what we're experiencing now. But this is already pretty impressive. If this video was helpful for you, would you do me a favor? Please give it a like. And in the comments below, let me know if you have ever used an AI technology to create images, whether it's Canva or some other tool.
I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to the Valor XL channel. We publish content that's specifically geared toward helping small businesses to truly thrive. Thanks a lot. I'll see you again next time. And until then, goodbye for now.